that's pretty clever, don't you, boy? Justin here. Today we are checking out High and Dry by Radiohead. This is a fantastic song for kind of advancing beginner guitar players. It's relatively simple, easier than you might think anyway. It's got an F sharp minor 11, which sounds really complicated, but it's pretty easy to play. An A sus 2, which again, a big name for a very easy two finger chord, and an E chord. Probably the only real tricky part of this is that little octave thing that happens in the intro. So what we're going to do is we're going to check out the rest of the song first and then go back and check out that little intro riff and take a bit of a quick look at the solo as well. The solo is one of those ones that's so powerful melodically, you can definitely play it on your own, even if you're doing like a solo acoustic thing like I did at the beginning there. It's kind of one of those solos where dropping it down and playing along anyway, so it kind of works still. But it could also be extracted and used as a second electric guitar part. It's played slightly differently, but I'll talk about that a little bit as well when we get to that point. Let's start off with a close-up. So the first chord we need is this an F sharp minor 11 chord. Pretty big name for a chord, easy to play. We start with fingers three and four in the middle two strings in the second fret. Then we pop second finger down on the second fret of the thickest string. Now, you won't be able to get that one right up near the fret, so you may have to press a little harder with your second finger than you probably used to. And you don't want to hear that fifth string. If you did hear it, it's actually it's in the chord anyway, but I think it sounds better with that muted. You probably won't be able to play it without muting. You'll probably find that that second finger lays down flat and mutes the fifth string, which is fine. So we have second fret, muted note, second fret, second fret, open string, open string. This is a really nice chord that you can use any time you find yourself with an F sharp minor chord, which is a bar chord traditionally. If you happen to find one in a song and you're like, I don't know how to play an F sharp minor, you could try using this. It won't work every time, but it'll work most of the time. It's a really, really nice uh, little chord grip to help yourself out of a sticky spot if you ever encounter that F sharp minor. So that's the first chord. Second chord, we just lift off the second finger and we want to probably mute the thicker string because we want this A sus2, so we don't want the thicker string sounding, then open, second, second, open, open. Okay, so second finger down, F sharp minor 11, I'm just gonna call it F sharp minor as we go through the tune. A sus2, which I'm just gonna call A through the tune, so kind of an A major sound really, but we're not playing the major thing, we're just playing the A sus2 in the, throughout the whole song. And then it goes to an E chord, so third finger can stay, and first and second finger go down in the usual spots for an E chord. Zero, two, two, one, open, open. We have one bar on the F sharp minor. One, two, three, four. One bar on the A. Two, three, four. And two bars on the E. Two. up at you think that's pretty clever don't you boy it's the same all of the way through the verses two three four flying on your motorcycle watching all the ground beneath you try even the second part of the verse there, it's the same chords, slightly different phrasing. You'd kill yourself for recognition, you'd kill yourself to never ever stop. Two, three, four. You broke another mirror, and you're turning into something you are not. It's actually the same for the chorus. Don't leave me high. And A. Don't leave me dry. Still going. Don't leave me high. Don't leave me dry. And guess what? Ba da ba da ba ba. Ba da ba da ba ba. Ba da ba da ba ba. 
that little riff, the little octaves thing, fits over the same progression. This is an F sharp. This is an E note, which is part of the A chord. And then it goes down to the E. So pretty much the whole tune has this F sharp minor for one bar, A sus two for one bar, and then two bars of E. But there's obviously lots more things going on with the tune. And with a song like this, one of the key things that you've got to think about is how you're going to change it up a little bit, and there in comes strumming. So it's really, really important the dynamics that you play the song. Because the chord progression is the same throughout, you need to be doing some extra stuff. Now, Strumming-wise, I'm going to try and show you the patterns that are kind of good guesstimations of what's going on on the original recording, but there are at least two acoustic guitar tracks plus electric guitar parts. So what I would encourage you to do is experiment a little with the way that you play the rhythms, particularly if you're playing it on your own. If you're going to play it in a band and you're going to divide the parts up, then you want to have a listen to the original recording a little bit more closely and try and copy the individual parts because it's the amalgamation of those parts that make it sound so terrific on the original recording, right? So having that kind of pumping electric guitar thing going on and the, the, the acoustic guitars are kind of divided up there um, Tom York tends to keep it, or seems to be keeping it pretty simple. There's another acoustic guitar part there, uh, adding in the little E sus4, which I'm going to show you. I'm going to show you kind of ways of incorporating the different parts all together as if you're going to play it on your own. But first of all, let's check out some of the rhythms. A good starting point for the rhythm for the verses is going to be one and two E and a uh, three E and four E and a one and two E and a uh, three E. And four E and down, 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 up, down, up, down, up, down, 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 up, down, up, down, up. Now, the truth of it is that there's going to be other strums that happen in there, particularly if you're singing. Like, to try and keep a strumming pattern like that exactly the same all of the way through while you're singing is fairly tricky. It's definitely possible. But I've, what I found kind of trying to play it was that that as my starting point if I got extra strums in there it really didn't I don't think it hindered the performance at all it didn't make me kind of fall out of my flow the key thing is keeping that hand moving so even in the section where we go down up down we've got to keep the hand moving because that's the thing that's going to keep us in time okay so one and two e and up three e and four e and a down 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 up down up, down, up, one, and two, E, and up, three, E, and four, E, and a one, and two, E, and up, three, E, and a four, E, one, and two, E, and up, three, E, and a four, E, and a down, 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 up, down, up, down, up. It really is the, the trick for getting these patterns right is repetition, doing them over and over again. If you're not that familiar with the 16th note counting, dividing our bar into 16 equal parts, one E and a two E and a three E and a four E and a, you can just think of the strumming pattern. Down, 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 up, down, up, down, up, down, 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 up, down, up, down, up. That's okay to think of it that way key thing is getting it right and what I would recommend you do is practice that pattern exactly as I'm just doing now with the muted strings and play along with the original recording to get used to the feeling of it in the track okay but as soon as you start going and putting those gaps in you're going to kind of spoil your sense of rhythm so you want to make sure you've got the chords right first of all like I you know I often say playing those chords along simply like this with one strum per bar making sure that you can get the chord changes correct with the original recording and playing along like that and then doing That pattern, I realize I just demonstrated it wrong. I put a wrong one in there, but it, you know, it really doesn't matter. If I put in an extra strum, no one's going to notice in the tune when you're playing along. It's not important. What's important is keeping the hand moving. Down, 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 up, down. But here, down, up, down, up, down, up, down, up, down, up, down, up. That's the key thing. You shouldn't really be able to tell what pattern I'm playing if you turn the sound off. Because that hand is just going to be super, super consistent. Okay? So my recommendation, chords first, along with the original recording. Then have a go at doing the muted hits. When you feel confident with both, then try putting them together. So you have down, 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 up, down, 
And put a little finger down here in the second fret of the third string. Two, three, four, and that last little bit. It's a really nice thing. It's it's played by other guitar parts on the original recording. I'm pretty sure it's not Tom York playing. At least the live videos I've seen doesn't look like he's adding that in himself. But you can definitely hear it on the track. And you hear it live as well. So other guitar parts or even sometimes keyboards are highlighting that sus sound. You can add it in, or you could choose not to. It's completely up to you. So I would suggest you go follow that little pattern through. Work your way through the verses first of all. Now, coming into the chorus, you also want to have a build. Okay, so it's one of these things where if you're playing on your own, can really make the song sound a lot better if you build into the chorus. So this, you've gone from here. Coming into the chorus, you're going to have... So I'm just moving to all down strums and building it up from soft and two and three and four and really just building it up. It tells the listeners, hey, we're at the chorus now, right? Again, remember when we're thinking about songwriting, you want the verses to be a little quieter to encourage the, the audience to listen to what you're singing about. And then in the choruses, you want to build it up, make it a bit more powerful for them to sing along with and connect their own stories to the songs. I feel like that seems to be a, a nice way to think of it, to remember that arrangement, to really build it up for the chorus. When it comes to the chorus drumming, down, 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 down. It's less important. What's important with really actually in the chorus is this driving. So you're really thinking about the downstrokes. One and two and three and four and, and I really... I'm fairly sure that there's one acoustic guitar just driving that along, doing all down strums, just one and two and three and four and. But again, to kind of mix it together to make it sound a little bit more like the original recording, I feel like a nice pattern, good standardized pattern to start off with, with would be one and two e and a three e and four e and a one and two e and a and four and one and two e and a three e and four e and down 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 up up down up down up down 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 up up down up down one and two e and a three e and four e and a one and two e and a three e and four e one and two e and a three e and four e and a one and two e and a three e and four e and I just do that a couple of times extra slow one and two e and a three e and four e and a one and two e and a three e and a four e and a one and two e and a three e and a four e and a sometimes four e and a sometimes just e and a again the hand moving continuously is the thing that's key here right when you do no leave That's the key thing. You want to lift. You want that chorus to be bigger. But you can put those extra upstrokes. Down, 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 up, up, down, up, down, up, down, down, up, down, down, up, 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 And when it goes back to the verse, even though you're still playing the 16th note, you want to think about dropping the volume down a little bit. It's really, really important to be aware of these dynamics so that you do that little build into the chorus. When it comes back to the verse, you drop it down again. It makes it so much better for the listener. If you go around and watch some acoustic guitar covers, people that keep the same strumming and the same dynamic right the way through the song just gets boring, right? So don't be that person. Just think a little bit about your dynamics. This is an easy song. It's only got three chords. It's a great one for working on your 16th note strumming -y stuff. You don't have to make it that complicated. You could simplify it and use other strumming uh, patterns if you're feeling like that one's a little bit more too complicated for you. I think it's worth working on because it's a great strumming pattern, really productive uh, 
one to spend time on. But if you're really, if you're new to, to to playing guitar and you love Radiohead, you could definitely go be going. That kind of pattern, anything that slow. One, two, three, and four. Or even one, two, and three, and four. Okay, so Old Faithful will work as well. Down, down, up, up, down, 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 up, up, down, 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 up, up, down. But I would definitely, if you're going to do that, move to the chorus to go down. Just change to all downs. Just so you've got that lift. Here it's really filled it up now. If I just take it back into the into the verse. You can hear how it makes a massive drop by changing that strumming pattern and playing softer, thinking about it being softer. So what I would suggest you do now is go through, make sure you got the chords right, work on the strumming pattern for the verses independently with the muted hits, play it along with the record, get used to the feeling of it, then work on the, the chorus one, then start just moving between the verse and the chorus on your own or with the original recording if you want help making sure that you stay in time. The good thing about playing along with a track or a backing track like you might find on the Justin Guitar Lessons and Songs app, although I can't remember actually if this song is on there or not, so you have to go and have a little look. But there's loads of great songs to be playing along with if this one isn't on there. But it, playing along with a backing track or the original recording will help you not mess up your time. It'll help you not stop because stopping the groove is the worst thing you can do for developing your rhythm guitar, right? So work on that. Play through the whole tune. Listen again to the original recording to figure out where those drops are as well. That's also really, you know, pretty important part of it. So uh, I would propose now that we're going to go and check out the intro. Then I'll talk a little bit about solo. <laughs> This is that intro and it happens after the uh, first chorus as well. So the first thing to check out is this thing, it's called an octave shape. So we're playing, it's the note G sharp with the first finger at the 11th fret on the fifth string. Then we're playing another G sharp here with the third finger on the 13th fret of the third string. Now you want to mute that thicker string. The tip of your first finger will press up to mute the thicker string. Then we've got the note, the middle string there, the fourth string will be muted. Then we've got the note again. So mute, note, mute, note. And then we want the thinnest two strings ringing out. Then that shape moves down two frets. So this is a G sharp, moving to a F sharp note. Then we go back to G sharp, then down to E. So first finger is now in the seventh fret. Okay. And then it's the same thing but we play that thicker string. So we move first finger down out of the way, because remember it's muted, we move it down, so we get the, that um, low E. Let me simplify that rhythm there just to get your fingers moving in the right way. Three, four. right making sure you're getting your muting right that would be a good way to simplify it but of course the original so we've got up down up down 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 three four e and a one and two three four e and a one Up, down, up, play. 
we're starting with an up. Up, down, up, down, 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 up, down. Okay? Up, down, up, down, 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 up, down. Up, down, up, down, 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 up, down. Up, down, up, face, down, up, down. Up, down, up, face. Again, is keeping that hand moving. Because if you do the rhythm slightly differently, it doesn't really matter. But if you're keeping that the, the motion of the arm moving, if I went. Like, people would probably even still recognize the tune. I'm not suggesting you're learning it wrong. But up, down, up, down, down, down Up, down, up, down, down, down That's really the key thing Up, down, up, down, down, down Okay, these things are going to take practice If you're a real beginner, this is probably too hard Right? Flat out If you're an advancing beginner and you've experimented with octaves And maybe you've learned a little bit of power chords Because octaves feel a lot, lot like power chords Then I would encourage you to have a little bit of a go at it Especially if you're a fan of Radiohead Because playing songs that really inspire you Things that you're happy to work a bit toward Are a really great vehicle for your guitar development Okay, so always remember that Even if things that feel a bit sticky, a little bit hard Means you've got to put a little bit of effort in If you're prepared to put in the effort, it's worth it Right? You will find it a little bit difficult if you're new to guitar this is a cool tune. It's a cool thing to learn how to play. So that's the intro taken care of. Now, the solo in this song. If you're going to play it as a solo thing on acoustic guitar, you need to keep the energy going. So while the original recording is kind of picking notes out individually, uh, I think if you're going to keep it going on your own, you need to be playing all down strums. <laughs> And it's not exactly what's on the original recording, but it works really well to keep that thing driving. If you get too much into going... I can't remember, it might even be a bend now on the original recording, if I can't remember. And I think actually it moves on to the third string, I think, on the original. I wouldn't go there. If you're playing it in a covers band and you're not playing, uh, trying to play it on your own, then... Give, have a listen to the original recording. I've, I've just shown you what is going on. It's these fingering. They're the, the only notes. It's just playing around on this thinner string. Just as an aside, if you want to get a little bit more creative with the tune and don't want to play it necessarily exactly the same as the record, all he's doing really is playing the E major scale on the B string and allowing the thin E string to ring out. You can hear him experimenting with it later in the, in the tune at the outro there, in the outro choruses. So if you just think, here's the note E, if we think of our major scale, tone, tone, semitone, tone, 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 semitone, okay? That's the 5, 7, 9, 10, 12, 14, 16, 17. Or you could go back to 5, 4, 2, open. So all of this. All of that stuff is fair game, right? So you can really experiment there. You know, I do think it's when you're doing a cover, it can be helpful to play things exactly right. As, as you'll learn a lot in the process, but it's also a cool idea to experiment with stuff like this as well. If you're playing it on your own, I'd probably be doing... Just because it's such a strong melody that it, you, you, I feel like even though it's the chorus at the end, you could drop off, play that, and then still be able to carry the, carry the song on there. Which is not the chorus, is it? it goes from the solo into the bridge, which is very sparse. So again, you're kind of dropping it back one gear into doing that, and then you're going to come out of that with a thing that you've ever had, single strums, and then you're going to real breakdown. She does that, doesn't it? There's a little two, three, four, and a one, 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 two, three, four,
two, three, four, E and a one. Good thing to practice this. Up, down, up, down, two, three, four, up, down, up, down, two, three, four, up, down, up, down. But I'm diverting, but I've got a little, I've got a little tangent, maybe forgive me, three, four, and two. But that's really important to get that little section as well. I've probably talked about that before the song. Back to the solo now. One and two and three and four and one and two and three and four. One and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and one and two and three and four. One and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and. Sometimes at the end, you can do this little, it's like an E sus. That's, not, that's absolutely not on the original recording. That's just something that I've done on this song in the past when I've been doing covers just because it kind of finishes off nicely. But again, feel free to experiment. I would start like that with the one and two and three and four and one and two and three and four. Relatively simple to do, okay? Very, very nice kind of beginner solo. Great one if you're playing in a band and you, you're trying to split up the guitar parts to different things, but also equally great just to have as a song that you can play on your own. I think that's everything i wanted to chat about with this tune i really hope you're enjoying it uh do head on over to the website there's plenty more radio head over there if you're feeling a bit ambitious all of those classic like paranoid android love that's an amazing song to play a little bit that one's got some tricky bits going on in it uh anyway hope you enjoyed this one have yourself a fantastic day i'll see you plenty more very soon bye bye Pretty clever, don't you, boy? Flying on your motorcycle, watching all the ground beneath you drop. You kill yourself for recognition, you kill yourself to never ever stop. Another mirror and you're turning into something you are not. Don't eat me. Don't leave me dry. Don't leave me high. Don't leave me dry. Wishing you could still make love They're the ones who hate you When you think you've got the world all sussed out They're the ones who spit at you You will be the one screaming out
you've ever had The best thing that you ever, ever had It's the best thing that you've ever had The best thing that you've had has gone away Don't leave me dry